Espresso is the king of coffees and is the starting point for most other cups of coffee. First, the beans. Dow Egbert's blenders believe it takes 42 well-roasted coffee beans to make a perfect espresso. It's the fine grind that gives it the complex taste we all love. But what about the origins of coffee? Who do you think actually discovered it? We made the first cup of coffee ever. Blimey, let's just think. No idea. Well, I think I was reading an article recently, and I think it was a South American chief. Was it Egyptians? The story I'm, I'm led to believe was a little boy in Ethiopia called Kaldi. Legend has it that around 300 AD, an Ethiopian goat herder noticed that his flock became very animated when they ate the red berries from one particular bush. He tried some himself, and full of energy, he passed on his story to a nearby community of monks. They found that if they roasted the beans and then ground them up, they could make them into a stimulating drink. Coffee was born. How do you like your espresso? Me personally, something strong, rich, smooth, with a bit of a bite on the end. The darker the better. I like it, you know, really packed in and quite sharp and short as well. I like a short espresso. By the time it arrived in Britain in the 17th century, coffee's energizing properties were well known. It proved a great alternative to beer, till then the mainstay of a family's diet. Coffee houses quickly became popular all over Europe. They started life as places for people to meet and do business. In Britain, they were called penny universities. One became the cornerstone of banking in the city of London. And this is what Lloyd's of London looked like when it opened in 1688 as a coffee house. They became synonymous with intelligent conversation, lively debate, and intellectual relationships. All right, Joanne, Ruggies. Thank you very much. The espresso contains a higher amount of dissolved matter than a standard coffee, but actually less caffeine cup for cup. When do you like your espresso? As soon as I walk in the door. <laughs> All the day. In, in the early morning? Usually in the morning, um, two, three, four cups. There was a second revolution in London in the 50s when coffee became cool and coffee bars sprang up everywhere. Coffee houses like this one at Kensington are having a new vogue throughout the country. With the unhurried philosophy of the Parisian at its pavement table, a new type of cafe society is growing up in Britain. Today, places like this... Have coffee become... has always been an occasion that's brought people together, but in the 1950s, after the austerity of the war, it also brought glamour to the high street. In 1753, a small shop selling coffee, tea and tobacco was opened in the Netherlands. It was one of the earliest of its kind, and it was called Dow Egberts. It went on to become an internationally renowned business that gained momentum as coffee became one of the world's greatest trading commodities and the lifeblood of many European cities. And no one took it to their hearts quite like the Viennese, for whom coffee became a way of life. Vienna without a coffee house, I think, is unthinkable. <laughs> My opinion. Uh, I need the atmosphere of the coffee house. Coffee is um, the substitute of blood for Viennese population. Now Vienna and the rest of Europe is peppered with coffee houses, which are little time capsules, happily resistant to change and loved by regulars. Young Caldi could have had no idea of what he started. A global force indeed, which affects stock markets, the shape of the UK high street, and you, your mood, the start of your day, the end of your meal. We all have our own story. Dow Egberts provides the ingredients to make a truly great cup of coffee. The rest is up to you.